Hello everyone, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this session on importance of data modernization for the insurance industry. I'm Devashish Chatterjee, Senior Vice President, ITC Infotech. And I'm fortunate to have Paul Johnson join me today. Welcome, Paul. Paul is the CIO. Welcome. And uh, just a quick introduction about Paul, and then I will quickly hand it over to you, Paul. Paul, uh, for our audience, Paul Johnson is the CIO, COO of PIB Group. And uh, he has driven a very successful data-driven transformation within the organization. And he will be sharing his perspective, learning, and giving us some, some of the guidance that are absolutely critical and important when you embark upon a data-driven transformation. Without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Paul, to give a little bit of perspective about PIB Group and uh, set the context for this session today. Paul, over to you. Thank you very much, DC. Uh, so, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so, some context of PIB, um, as DC's al already introduced myself. Uh, PIB Group is a collective of different types of brokerages, including direct and indirect um, advised and non-advised insurances in the retail space, in the wholesale space, and, and very much around the aftercare um, elements too. Uh, PIB is, is roughly around 1,400 people. We're growing very, very fast. And I joined uh, uh, two years ago now. So when I joined, um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize, and I agreed with the Exco members and thereafter the board, was that there are two main elements that are always persistent in a company, especially a forward-looking company. And one is obviously the customer and how do you service that customer? Because without those, um, there, is no there is no company at all. Uh, the second thing is the importance of data and making sure that you have uh, all the data around the organization that you can use uh, and understand. And that data is persistent because it gives you both a backward historic look and it allows you to look forward to uh, and look at how the customers are reacting, what they need, and also how you can remodel your organization if you need to. So that was a bit of context. So unfortunately for me, uh, the Exco. Uh, bought into this. It took some um, explanation in some instances to talk about the value, and I think that is one of the things that uh, is really key to the entry point to organisations is it's not around data per se, it's the value of data and being able to give a quick insight into an example of actually this is what you're going to get when we finished. So we embarked on um, the new data strategy. And one of the key elements of that was to remove our uh, legacy database or data warehouse. I used to call it a reporting system, to be honest, because it was much less a data warehouse than it was a, uh, than it was a reporting system. So we architected with support from ITC the, the new data model, the new infrastructure, but having clear direction in mind as to what we were trying to achieve. And in summary, what we were trying to achieve was have a single view of all of our data, all of our data in one area, uh, being able to connect to all of our systems around the organization, and also to be able to ingest external data as and when we believe it was required. And as an output, the key was to give the business real true insight into how it was operating, both, of, both on an operational efficiency perspective a compliance perspective, how we're servicing our customers, how accurately did we know our customers and therefore how best could we give advice and making sure we go in the appropriate advice. And also in the future, how do we sort out our strategy using data as the key insight into how the market may be shifting or how we are performing to our customers' demands. So we went ahead and, uh, and built the system. There were challenges. One of the big challenges being is that all of the data around the organization is different. Yeah. So with a lot of effort and making sure we had a good data dictionary, that was that was the key thing we done. 
that was the, at the start of the journey that we had. Okay. Um, yeah. DC. Yeah. No, I was uh, I was uh, just about to mention uh, how fortunate I was uh, to be able to work with you. I did see you how passionately you drove the strategy and how you kept all of us grounded and honest as you set the vision uh, for the PIB group, brought in key aspects of value that you articulated today, uh, the focus on customer and of course the focus on data to become uh, key for enabling that customer experience. One thing though, Paul, I think it will be uh, very uh, important and helpful for our audience today if you can kind of highlight a few of the key industry shifts that you have seen, which is kind of perhaps influencing the way uh, leaders like you are driving data strategy within the organization. Uh, any thoughts around the shifts that you see? Absolutely. So, you know, what we're seeing is, I think across all industries, but specifically around insurance is we're expecting much more insight and having around our customer itself and being able to tailor services for a particular customer instead of just having a set of products that you try and sell. So it, it, we're definitely moving to more towards a service orientated type of uh, environment than we are products. And that's obviously made up of products, but it's how you engage with the customer as well as the services you're actually providing. The other thing is around, uh, you know, the, the big shift is around using data and automation through AI, as an example, on how do we then improve the operational efficiency of the organization whilst also providing our customers with a better service. And there's, there's two great things on that. It's one, there's a, a the revenue uplift, hopefully, if you get it right. And the other one is operational efficiency. So you can actually focus your employees on servicing the customer in a different way. So that, that two big shifts, I think, that are occurring. Insurance itself, if I may say, this is, you know, we're getting a lot more advanced. So it's becoming more on demand than that you've got a, here's a car insurance. Actually, it can be much more around how you use your car and data tells you how someone's doing that and gives you a risk profile. No, very interesting, Paul. I mean, I, I as I see it and leaders like you, have been propagating the whole concept of data as a product and uh, how do you bring in the efficiencies how do you enable an organization to look at data strategically and have the required ownership from the business side as well so that all the quality aspects that can be brought in together to drive a product that is useful the drive drive a product that helps in the customer experience. Very beautifully put, uh, I think that's where the industry is going. Um, and absolutely, it's a very uh, exciting time ahead of us. We will go into a quick uh, poll to see what, the, uh, what our audiences feel about what's happening, and especially on the insurance side, uh, what really is the areas where data analytics is uh, creating, a, uh, creating an impact? A quick poll uh, would really help. And I think um, as, as the poll uh, questions are coming up and uh, our audiences are uh, giving their answers, what do you think, Paul, is, is uh, your view on which area in data analytics is uh, really resonating now and would need a, a greater focus? Well, I think sort of there's there's uh, analytics, which is we've off, off historically looked backwards, but actually the analytics we're now doing is looking at the historical data and actually ingesting external data sets as well to see what the future patterns may look like. That's quite a, a big change for organisations to look forward. So market uh, analytics in that element is is really key, and actually compliance and insurance is absolutely key as well, actually, uh, which is around risk claims management and advisory elements of insurance. Did we, we see some poll come back? Um, I can see the poll, I can't see the results yet, uh, DC. The results are maybe taking a little longer. I can see them now. 
So okay. uh, the, the big one that's come through and, and almost no surprises from a revenue generation perspective is product cross and upsell. Uh, absolutely, I, I actually buy into that is an absolute key area as, as you uh, one actually, you've got a big customer base, you also got a lot of products and services. So you want to make sure you can sell as, as many appropriate products to those customers as, as possible. So it's absolutely key. The second one that's coming is early detection of risk and, and claims. Again, that's about risk mitigation. And data within PIB, we're using more and more of that to actually try and drive that, uh, that area. No, wonderful. Uh, let's, let's get into the next area. And uh, Paul, it will be really uh, helpful if you can kind of articulate uh, from purely from a data modernization standpoint, what were the business imperatives and really the drivers uh, which were there uh, to kind of drive the data-driven strategy uh, for your organization? I'm back on camera, by the way, I had some problems, yep. I can see you now, DC. Uh, <laughs> so there's, there's, there's a number of things. I think the fundamental, the fundamental, the foundation stones have to be solid. So, you know, what you need to make sure is that it's stable and it's always available and your data ingestion is always happening. Uh, that was obviously the stability and being always there was a, a key player for, for PIB group. And I think that's probably fair to say for everyone. And I'm sure that all the people who deal with data and systems here know that there are many erroneous problems maintaining a, a large data repository data lake. So that was one of the first things. The second thing was, for the business to be able to have quick and flexible real-time insight into how their businesses were performing. So from a dashboard, dashboard perspective, and having a common way of actually measuring performance across the organization. So uh, especially as we acquire a lot of companies, you can measure A versus B versus C and making sure that you know, we, we optimize the best way of serving our customer and, and, and our operational efficiency. That is really key for them. The third thing for us was that I'm a big believer in um, decentralizing data, as in the technology guys can put all the data models together and make it available. But it's very important to me that we trained up specialists within the business themselves who can do real time deep analysis of the things that are important to them then and there and now, and also to be able to look at forward look predictive analytics. And then that's mm. the model we've put in. We don't want to rely on IT for that. Lastly, obviously, you've got on your on your slide monetization. That is a latter thing for us. Um, we could do it in the future, but you know we're using the data and the buy-in from the executive. It wasn't around monetization of data. It was about helping we actually make our company better for its customers from those areas that I was just mentioning. So how um, how did you sell this vision to the board? I will ask a question because uh, and and maybe this will help because many a times uh, it is extremely difficult to take the value of uh, data and present it to a board because where board is always perhaps looking for immediate results, but there is of course a time uh, this transformation really uh, requires and you need to go through a well-defined thought through process so what has been your experience when you interacted with board how did you present some of the key aspects which will help them actually go ahead and sign off to the vision that you have uh, crafted for pib group like many projects dc that's a slight conundrum when it's more infrastructure orientated it's not a direct product for a customer but uh, in our instance it is about return on investment and the immediate short-term return on investment where the cost profile of the cloud implementation based on the Azure and Microsoft stack um, from a BAU OPEX perspective was actually more cost effective than just putting more and more reporting databases in place. So there was a direct and obvious return on investment over a two, three year period. The second one was around reliability. Everyone wants to see good reporting and everyone knows that it isn't always that consistent. So it was around making sure that, although there may not be a monetary impact, but it was a insight impact. 
um, allowing the company to react upon um, data that we were seeing they were doing analysis on. And some of the other bits more future is about from a trust me, this is where it's very, very important to, to have um, trust in your organization from fellow Exco members, although some may not always be believers initially, but as long as you've got trust and they actually think, well, Paul must be trying to do this for the right reasons. It's just, just not a great big IT initiative. And then get some very quick wins out. As soon as you get the quick wins out, um, they then buy into it more and more, and then you can get on that next phase journey. Uh, and that's basically how we've done it. And I think now with MPIB, everyone understands what we've done is built a really brilliant foundation to do all the other exciting things we want to do within the organization. You know, very, 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 uh, very true and very insightful, Paul. But Paul, I will flip the uh, other side of uh, the coin uh, now and ask you, uh, what would be your advice of things that absolutely is a no-no when you when you're embarking on a data-driven transformation? You should avoid doing certain things, or maybe the learnings that came where perhaps you thought for a second that okay. We probably need a course correction. I'm sure, I mean, you and I have been across some situations where we have to take a decision on how to really proceed. So uh, it'll be good to hear from you on your own personal learning of what probably needs to be avoided. I guess one of the cliche terms is don't bite off more than you can chew uh, in the initial <laughs> phase, for sure. So don't promise the well, just promise what you can deliver. That's number one. The other one is making sure you've got really good support from the business users, users who are going to help you define the data dictionary, dictionary and how, how you actually want to present that data. Don't do it in a silo. Don't do it through your data guys and your, your IT guys. It has to be an absolute collaborative exercise with the business. But that also causes some challenges, as you, as you may recall, DC, is that, you know, Different people want slightly different things. So it takes a little bit of corralling around to talk about why we should do it in a particular way. But fundamentally, they've got to agree with each other, with their peers. And that's around coordination and maybe some influencing around, you know, from learnings. But, but don't rush it. If you rush it, you, you're going to make a mistake. You need to have it well planned and uh, but get a quick win out as soon as you possibly can without having to build everything all at once. Yeah, I mean, uh, very rightfully said, I think uh, prioritization, defining small chunks, uh, showing some quick results, uh, really not trying to uh, uh, paint the whole picture in one go is probably the right approach. And uh, that gives confidence back to your board. Um, I think we are uh, right about time for perhaps taking a poll question, next poll uh, question. And this is an interesting question about uh, what are the different challenges uh, which are there when building uh, building uh, your right data foundation. Uh, I would, Paul, my view is that there are multiple data silos, there are multiple uh, legacy system. And I think one of the aspects that you have clearly called out is the fact that we need to be with the business tightly integrated and we need to work hand in hand in defining the data catalog the data uh, definitions and really understand the data while building the foundation would love to hear your views uh, paul on what what is there as we wait for the poll results to come uh, on the screen for us i think it's, it's interesting when you look at the questions because actually they all play to each other so if you've got lack of governance and compliance which in effect means you've got no definition potentially, you're going to get diversified siloed and complex ecosystems because everyone's going to be doing it different anyway. So um, that, that is the issue. So one place to the other. Uh, but the, if, you are, if you're a CIO and you've inherited an environment, the poll comes out and reflects exactly what I was just going to say. Inherently, you've got a, diver a diversified, siloed, and complex ecosystem, which is the hardest thing to do. Mm. Uh, and you've got to then map that all back out. So that, that's come out of the top DC. 
Uh, and actually, the other two that become equal, um, quite a bit down, but lack of access to new data types and models and legacy data management practices. So uh, that's how the the um, viewers have, have seen that question. And that is really uh, stating and again being pragmatic as to what you want to take in your first six months of the transformation that you are driving, get a grip and the control, understand the data definition better, and then perhaps move uh, into actually scaling your uh, data-driven transformation within the organization. I think that seems to be the right approach in which we uh, take things forward. I will uh, take it a little in a different direction now, Paul, uh, talking about a little more about really the technology aspects, the key tenants uh, which really helped you succeed as a leader and present, and what would be your advice to similar leaders um, as the key aspects of uh, tenants of success for such a program? Okay, so obviously the one thing that we, we aim to do, and I think we've achieved as well, is have a scalable arch uh, architecture. So we have put it into the cloud. And we have used the Microsoft suite. AWS had a, a similar suite of tools, to be honest, but we decided to go with the Azure suite of um, data tools. Um, so the scalability is a big thing. Uh, it data integrity. Now, we what we what we're doing is actually we're layering it with quality control capabilities now. So the integrity of the data we ingested the data. Um, but now it's all central. We can now run data analytic queries against the data and understand now where the integrity isn't approach, isn't actually in place. And we understand the causes of that. So it may be a process change. So that was a big thing is that making sure that the, the data is captured appropriately. And that actually meant compliantly, actually, in many cases, making sure people are putting in the system what those meant to be putting in and not just free fields. And the, true, the, the one thing that I, I would say, though, is around the true cost of ownership. Um, I'm not sure, depending on your environment, whether a cloud environment is lower cost of ownership than an on-premise. And the reason I say that is it does depend on the scale of the on-premise solutions you have and how disparate they are. If you already have one server that's really good and built uh, and it's already scaled, it probably isn't any more cost effective to go into the cloud because you know it's you, you're paying a, a monthly fee in the cloud if you have multiple instances it absolutely is more cost effective to go into the cloud mm, yeah yeah what about uh, paul i i i just recalled our uh, interaction and uh, during the execution times about the security aspect i think that was something which all of a sudden had come forward and we need to we had to or the technical team really had to figure out how to have an integrated single sign on and uh, robust security aspects uh, enabled seamlessly for your enterprise application as well as for your data platform so what is what is your perspective on that with that experience that we have gone through together i think it will be a very interesting uh, insight to the uh, to, uh, to our audience Yes, obviously, data security for us is very, very important, not only about data leakage, but as importantly to that is who can access what data and in what form. Uh, and if you recall, DC, we, we have something called Okta that provides us with our single sign on. And what we discovered is that um, the solutions that uh, have been selected uh, in conjunction with yourself struggle to use the Okta single sign on yeah. solution. Um, yes. But it was an absolute imperative without the security framework in place and access control and uh, preventing the ability to to corrupt the data, we couldn't go live. It, it, we wouldn't have gone live with it. So I think one of the lessons learned, I think, in hindsight, is that now security has to be at the forefront of what you're doing because you don't want to open the door for everyone to see everything and do whatever they want. Is make sure that the tool set you've got is proven and probably tested and used somewhere uh, in the same environment that you're looking to target. Um, because you just cannot expose yourself, especially in financial services under GDPR and everything else, you cannot expose yourself to any data issues. 
Very nice, very important. And I just wanted to summarize a few of the call outs that you did uh, during, uh, during this session so far uh, for the benefit of our audience. Um, really, you, you call out the importance of uh, having this strategy defined along working along with the business and hand in hand because data definition, um, what does the data say? The data catalog is absolutely critical when you want to leverage that as a strategic asset. So working with business right up front and defining the plan is one critical aspect. Keeping in mind uh, some of the um, aspects of customer centricity, uh, that is important because ultimately you're delivering to the top line, your board is always going to look for higher revenues, but that will only be possible if you're keeping customer in the center while you're defining a data analytics strategy. I think it's a very important call out that you have done. More importantly, I think you have uh, stressed on the fact that data quality is king. Focus on your first initial uh, few months to really have ensure because PIB, as you, you pointed out, has grown over, over the years with acquisition and is growing exponentially fast. And as you're integrating, there is a need for a common data model, uh, which will be the heart of the Analytics Foundation. Very, very important thing uh, that, that you called out. And then, of course, getting into cloud, ensuring that security aspects are handled uh, pretty well, GDPR compliance aspects are getting covered. These are all key tenants of a successful data-driven strategy within the organization. And this is just laying the foundation to scale further uh, for the future. We'll take a little bit of pause and uh, we'll request our guest now to uh, start sharing your questions uh, that we will take. We, we have a few more. We probably will be able to take three or, uh, two or three questions um, as we are coming uh, nearly close to this session, uh, but let's see uh, what our uh, audience has to ask, Paul, and then we'll go from there. Cool. So I see uh, some questions trickling in, and um, let's see what, what uh, this audience, uh, the question is related to Paul, uh, going to be, what do you think is going to be the biggest change in the insurance uh, industry where data will be really crucial? I think it's a very uh, well thought through question. I can, uh, many might have uh, this in their mind. I think as the, as the industry is changing and the, the types of, if you think of the gig economy and such forth, people's expectations are changing. So um, a lot of insurance, on, especially the direct insurance, will move to much more on an on-demand risk basis. You know, when risk. you need it, you have it time. So therefore, you need data to continue, continuously measure that and provide the data at the right time, but whilst also ensuring that there's no fraudulent activity going on. So for example, I'm not really driving my car, but I, I've just told you two minutes before I've had this accident type of thing. So. Yeah. Uh, data and uh, AI and um, the Internet of Things all are changing within the industry, of which data will be fundamental to understanding behaviours. Wonderful, wonderful. Let me uh, let me uh, take another question uh, which has come, and this is an interesting and it, it's really um, a lot of discussion really is happening and a very interesting question which has come. Really pragmatic view on AI ML and uh, what is really the use case which is again coming keeping insurance industry in mind where AI, AI ML is uh, creating a large impact what is your point of view I think uh... yeah well there's some things that we're looking at uh, as well so even simple things like auto reconciliation where we as a broker we engage with the insurers themselves so uh, automation or AI is helping understand that, especially when things come in totally different formats. So that's one simple use case, but I think others are around document generation. So being able to automatically scan in receive documents from the customer and generate the majority of the policy for them uh, automatically. And the obviously the, the, the big obvious one for all of the insurance people online will be around claims processes. Claims processing, claims yeah. understanding and risk, risk profiling. 
AI will be able to do a lot of those things through robotics and just data analytics. Uh, that's all coming. We can see that's already coming. I'm sure some of the people on the call are doing it already. Uh, so that will be much more prevalent. Yeah. And um, I believe uh, this becomes uh, easier to implement when your starting point has been that I am going to treat data as a product. I am going to ensure or we are going to ensure high quality of the data foundation and hence the products are going to relate to applications which are going to have direct impact to the business process. So this is about taking uh, analytics uh, right in front of the business process and creating that impact for the organization. Absolutely. We probably, yeah, sorry, you were saying something, Paul. No, yeah. far away. We are probably close and uh, perhaps have time for one last question. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah, I mean, I think this is uh, perhaps something that you have uh, already touched upon a little bit, but the question is rather um, really on uh, what's your view on cloud-based uh, solution uh, from moving from legacy to a cloud-based, what is the impact to the TCO? Is it really bringing down the cost or is, is it uh, something else? I mean, what have you seen uh, is, is really the audience is uh, trying to understand. Yeah, we, we had a relatively simple infrastructure before for reporting, I just call it reporting. Um, but even so, we did actually get uh, a, an ROI benefit um, by moving to the cloud. The only thing is, which would be different is that you, don't, you can't sweat the asset in the cloud as much as you can on site. If you want to keep your infrastructure, your hardware going for more years and, have, and sweat it for longer, uh, you can't do that in the cloud. But inherently, the cloud is, the, for me anyway, my belief is that's the right way to go. Even if you don't get a direct um, benefit on CCO, as in just pure cost, but there is a benefit in TCO in that it's just easier to flex it and upgrade it and move it. So all those hidden costs that you get, um, you don't have as much of. So th there is always a benefit, in my view, from a cost perspective. Wonderful. And uh, I think uh, it is also important, perhaps, Paul, to highlight the fact that there has been rapid uh, innovation which has come into the cloud and it has really become the intelligent cloud and your ability. There are already algorithms, capabilities built in that needs to be leveraged. Thanks a lot, Paul. And um, audience, I mean, uh, we have come to the end of the session. Uh, I hope uh, you, you really liked what you heard from Paul, he has given his personal experience and shared with uh, with all of us and uh, how to go about creating a data-driven strategy and especially for the insurance industry. More importantly, what are the call-outs, watch-outs uh, that are important? There is a survey question uh, which is coming uh, right now. Would really appreciate uh, you. It will really help us uh, make these type of sessions much more impactful going forward, taking your input, uh, I hope you'll be visiting us in LinkedIn, uh, in our corner, ITC Infotech. Uh, and uh, Paul, thanks a lot once again. Really appreciative of your time and thanks for sharing your views on how to make data-driven uh, organizations within the, in the, in the insurance domain. Thanks a lot. Thank you, DC. And stay well, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.